So let's talk about invisibility. Sometimes I teach optics at the university, and I tell my students, invisibility is impossible. Light cannot wrap around an object like water wrapping around a boulder downstream from a boulder. You do not even know there's a boulder upstream. Water wraps around the boulder, reforms on the other side, and the boulder becomes invisible to anyone downstream. Light cannot do that, I taught my students. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> so was every single physics textbook on the planet Earth. This year was achieved on a small scale at optical frequencies at the University of California at Berkeley, the University of Karlsruhe in Germany, and also Caltech in Los Angeles. Three groups have now shown that visible light on a microscopic scale can bend in a way consistent with invisibility. So, Harry Potter, watch out. <laughs> However, there are problems. We're not going to have any invisibility cloak anytime soon. It'll take decades to iron out the problems. For example, if you are inside the invisibility cloak, it's a cylinder, you cannot see, if you're inside, you cannot see outside. You have to drill two holes. So from the outside, you see two eyeballs floating <laughs> in midair, like this. So this is not a true invisibility cloak, because otherwise you cannot see outside. However, it's coming more rapidly than you think. Now, also, Stephen Hawking, my colleague, has said that he doesn't believe in time travel because where are the tourists from the future visiting him? Maybe they're invisible. <laughs> anyway, the way it's done is that we physicists made a mistake. When we teach optics, we say the light bends in water, glass, diamonds, oil. We talk about uniform substances, but if they're impurities, we forgot about that. If they're impurities, each impurity can kick the light beam to within the wavelength of light, and that's how you can attain invisibility. So with metamaterials, with impurities in it, light can wrap around the object, reform at the other end, just like water going around a boulder in a stream. This was once thought to violate all the known laws of physics, and now we've done it. And now let's move on to something that's at the heart of every Trekkie, and that is teleportation. Is it possible to dissolve and then have your atoms reform on the other side of the room? This is the device that makes the quantum teleportation possible. It is done with laser beams, but as I mentioned, cesium, Beryllium atoms have now been teleported, and one day we'll perhaps be able to teleport large objects. Now the next question is, what about Star Wars? What about some of the fantastic devices in Star Wars, like, for example, the lightsaber? I mean, every kid grows up playing with lightsabers. It turns out that lightsabers really are possible using plasmas, very hot gas, like what you find at, in the center of the sun, you can actually create a lightsaber that'll slice right through uh, any piece of steel. The problem, though, why don't we have ray guns? Why don't we have lightsabers? Does anyone know the reason? We can create a laser beam that'll punch right through steel. We can create lightsabers that'll slice like butter through any material. So why don't we have ray guns and lightsabers in the battlefield? Does anyone know the answer to that? Yeah, we would just keep on going, right? Yeah, but why don't we deploy these on the battlefield then? Yeah, yeah. there's no portable power pack. That is the reason why we don't have jet packs, like Buck Rogers. That's the reason why we don't have ray guns. That's the reason why we don't have lightsabers on the battlefield. No portable power pack. The only device that small, capable of unleashing power on that scale, is a small hydrogen warhead. And you don't want that, okay? <laughs> so a portable power pack is the reason why we don't have ray guns, force fields, jet packs. The world's most advanced jet pack only runs for about two to three minutes. So if you're in a firefight and it runs after two, three minutes in space, 
you're in deep trouble. So that doesn't work. However, the Death Star is possible. When Star Wars first came out, the critic says, ha, you're not going to be able to create an object which can destroy the Earth. You cannot create a planet buster. Wrong. We can develop planet busters. It turns out there's no upper limit to the amount of energy that can be stored in a hydrogen bomb. How do I know that? I was once offered a job designing hydrogen warheads. I turned it down because I thought that I didn't want to work on these little explosions called atomic bombs. I wanted to work on big explosions, like the Big Bang. <laughs> so let's talk about this. It is possible that by stacking H-bombs in layers, you can create hydrogen bombs of unlimited magnitude. That is, you can literally crack the Earth in half, and you can have laser beams, which store the energy. Of course, you have practical problems, like the stability of the lasing material. But it is theoretically possible to build these things. And in outer space, they may occur naturally. This is a gamma ray burster, a gigantic hypernova that releases a pencil thin, pencil thin beam of light through the North Pole and the South Pole. If one of these beams of light ever hit the Earth, it's all over. That's why we are keeping track of WR 104. WR-104 has been developing quite a bit of internet chatter. It is a gamma ray burster in making aimed directly at the Earth. You're staring now at the business end of an object which may have enough energy to blow the Earth apart. Well, the good news is it is 8,000 light years away which is a good, comfortable distance to be, but gamma ray bursters can negotiate that distance. The latest calculation shows that it's slightly misaligned, so it'll probably graze the Earth, but not hit the Earth. And it's 8,000 light years away, which means that maybe it blew up 8,000 years ago. And tomorrow, you're doing your laundry. And you look up. And you see this huge ball of gamma rays coming at you, ionizing the atmosphere in the process. You can um, kiss your rear end goodbye. But the latest calculation shows that it's far away, and it probably will just miss the Earth. But its north pole is pointed directly at us, slightly misaligned by about one degree. And now let's talk about...